last week. They yeah. didn't give up a single death. And really, from start to finish, ran them around in circles. Origin only one position greater than Fnatic on the table. And truthfully, not performing a massive amount better than Fnatic at this time. But Splice did reveal their hand, which was the split push Nautilus, which, have we seen in different matchups afterwards, is just a complete pain in the butt to deal with when he starts ramping up. Uh, fantastic performance though from Wonderware. The first time that I think he straight up carried a game uh, with some fantastic hooks on Reckless overall. But so as last week as well, Origin was struggling and who showed up all of a sudden getting only a modicum of help, it was Soas. He straight up won that game with the split push pressure on Fiora, joining the team fights a little late, but then 1v2, 1v3, getting some kills. Yeah, that was definitely the case. Let's see if Splice get their hands on that Nautilus again, because if they do, I want to ask you how you play against it or what tools Origin have available to You're catch wrong. up on bans. Let's see if we get it first, but we'll get too excited. Fiora, right, Kalista teacher, from teacher Splice, <laughs> Nidalee and Cogmore from Origin, and Oriana, Oriana, ban targeted towards Power of Evil. That is an unexpected one. And I can see you turning your nose up. Crap I don't know. I don't know about the Oriana ban. I guess it's because Spice doesn't want to put Senkux on the utility champion. Or perhaps it's like the one few matchup that does well into Lu. Because we have to go back to what Spice's issues were. Senkux was getting kills, but then no farm. And Wonderware was getting farm, but then no kills. So what they did is they switched it around. They put uh, Wonderware on an engaged carry and Senkix on a utility champion like Lulu. It got banned out right now though. So perhaps they're looking to put Senkix actually on a carry this week, try to enable him and remove as many passive matchups from Power of Evil as they can. Get rid of the Orient in mid lane, force the skill matchup and maybe camp for Senkix and get into Snowball because once Spice improves in the macro game, they can start donating farm to Senkix. It's not that hard. You put him on a side lane but they seem to have struggled in the past. Well, we've seen the highlight reel of Senkax's LeBlanc about 27 million times at this point. Let's see if he gets his hands on that Gangplank. It would be interesting, you know, Splice have played 12 games now, and Senkax is adding another potential unique champion to the roster. We're seeing Splice pick way more unique champions than the majority of other teams. DeFisio has actually said, hey, look, get to a good level on one and then branch out. We'll see if this is maybe the magic number. Alistair Lucian, safe lock in here for OG. Yeah, I definitely agree on that whole uh, champion diversity thing because if you're a team that struggles with the core elements of the gameplay, by all means, perfect them on maybe a handful of champions. Don't try to do everything at once. Learn how to play all champions and the game at once because that is a recipe for failure. As for the draft right now, power picking GP has the hits counters, but if you can make it survive somewhere, uh, I think it almost has to go mid though because Power of Evil is not a lane pressure player. So you kind of get the Gangplank scaling for free in the mid lane with Senkux, who can then pick up side lane farm maybe with his ulti or just scale into the late game. And again, you can put Wonderware on a tank in the top lane, which seems to be the preferential uh, choice for a lot of players here. Kikis is a tank player. Oduwane has been trending towards tanks. Hell, even Cabo Shard yeah. played a tank today. <laughs> so Wonderware, by all means, don't buck the trend. Nope. Go for the tanks. Yeah, it's uh, don't fix what's not broken. And to expand on that, Power of Evil lane matchup or lane presence, he's actually traditionally down in CSD at 10. Now, it doesn't tell the full story, because it is an average, of course, but hovering over a power pick. Nautilus, if this is a steal away from Wonderwear, is potentially a good lock-in, but instead, Amazing's going to default to the yep. next sort of tier of jungler with Elise on Splice. It's Lee Sin for they Amazing. They could steal the Nautilus, but then they give up double counter pick, for, uh, or at least one counter pick, because they would last pick their jungler when the enemy jungler has already locked in, so... I think they kind of ran out of time and didn't take that into equation, because maybe the Nautilus plus Lee Sin could have been a good pickup here for Origin. Power of Evil going for the aggressive LeBlanc matchup, though. LeBlanc has very few, um, I feel like, losing matchups at this point in the game. Do Splice even run the risk of calling the bluff? Are you okay? I mean, GP into LeBlanc, we know GP's landing phase is always going to be tough. Or do we just take Nautilus now and have that front line, Nautilus Braum, Get some damage elsewhere. I love wouldn't wear a Nautilus, so um, it's just up up to Senkix. Can he handle the matchup? Now we're about to find out. Ten seconds left before they lock in the last two champions. It will be a Caitlyn lock in for Ooh. Kobe. That is the second time he's run at the split. Are we going to see a Quinn here? That could be the pick because we actually have tank presence on Mitty on the Alistar already. The flex has been forced into the top lane, just like you said, for that matchup. They weren't willing to take it. They put Wonderware on a scaling carry, and so was. He likes that kind of isolated 1v1 duel style. Historically, both Wonderware and Senkux have played Lissandra, both of them with one game apiece. 
That's I mean, true. maybe they could swap it again, um, you know, depending on what the final picking is here for Origin. And if Quinn is locked, obviously that'll be quite comfortable in Soaz's hands. He's got a lot of experience, but he can't afford to fly into towers and fly into his opponent's I hands mean, like he did three weeks ago. I think you may actually be right because dodging the, the Gangplank matchup in the mid lane away from the LeBlanc to top lane only to run into a Quinn, you're like, you know about that swap that I initiated? <laughs> Cancel. I'm taking this champion anyways. I don't want to. Nobody wants to have the gangplank at this point. Um, we'll have to see. 20 seconds is the time when they swap, and then we can uh, finalize our thoughts on the Splice game plan. Is it fair to say Splice have the possibility of getting run over early? Are there some tools here that Origin can play with the LeBlanc, the Quinn, the Lee Sin, at least in the solo lanes? I mean, definitely they have the tools, or they, they can lose the the solo lanes. Although I think Lissandro lanes fine into LeBlanc. It feels like that's actually. A decent matchup that I've seen before. My memory's a little foggy here, so I may be wrong. Especially with the item path of early Abyssal Scepter. That can yeah, play yeah. into Lissandra's favor. Both both go early Abyssal, obviously. Uh, but it's just that you can, at least when she distortions in, a well-timed W can snare. Uh, and you can farm relatively safely. I wonder, though, if Spice lane swaps here. Um, they will lose their bottom lane advantage. Caitlyn, obviously, the superior trader into melee melee matchup with supports. But if they lane swap, they can at least hide the Gangplank, because Gangplank into Quinn is ugly in the early game. Yeah, Gangplank into a lot of things is tough, but this is especially difficult. And we'll let me see if uh, there's going to be some support from Amazing onto Soaz. It worked out a little bit last week, and uh, I distinctly remember some poor 2v2 targeting uh, on the side of Origin that made their life a bit difficult. Here's your team compositions once more. The flags are lit as well. Origin taking on Splice. And there's actually a lot at stake here, Krepa, because if Origin win this game, we will have three teams locked into playoff positions. Origin can gift their opponents a guaranteed playoff berth. I mean, there's so many games left that it actually oh, yes. doesn't really matter, but obviously being predicted into playoffs is a, a thing every team really wants. Something you said prompted me to think a little bit more, though, where you said you talked about amazing helping Soas. Running over Origin's team comp, though, the, they don't have much CC. They only have a couple of snares and a pulverize. So they have a very, what I call like a conditional composition where a lot of things need to go right and they need to play the pressure game. But if you look at Splice, if they can get like a mid to late game team fight with Gangplank, Lissandra, Peel from Braum, suddenly things get absolutely explosive. So Splice, if they can keep their passive style against Origin, a rather passive team too, we could see a decisive victory in the mid game uh, for that roster. Well, we'll find out. T uh, tempo might be the name of the game. Uh, looking for a potential lane swap. Nothing to give it away yet. So likely not going to see that one. This, this area generally doesn't get defended too much. So Mithi, instead of uh, going for the wrist brushes, he just walks in on Krugs. Nisbeth, I mean, come on, dude. You saw that war. Don't hide here <laughs> in Vision. At least make them think about it. It's a double uh, fake. This, actually, this it's is a the, double fake. It's the uh, elaborate mind games. Like, is he here? Where's Kabi? There's Kobe. Hey. There's Kobe. <laughs> They're going to start off on the Krugs. Uh, nothing too exciting as far as Keystone Masteries are concerned. Oh. Sven and Mithy, they're starting off on the Grom. Yeah, Wind Speaker, Alistair, uh, fundamental into a, into a team fight composition. Uh, unless you, uh, if they have a lot of assassins, you could argue Bomb of Stone to maybe keep somebody alive. But Wind Speaker, just so valuable. The amount of uh, gold it gives you in stats worth. And here we see Senkux. Something he likes doing early pushing. He did it last week with the Lulu as well. Just abused that mid lane matchup. He's trying to poke and push at the same time, but once he misses Q, obviously a Power Evil can go in for a counter trade. So that's what this matchup's all about. Um, pushing so the other party has to, use to, has to use their spells to actually get the minions. Oh, Spin takes a Winter's Bite. I mean, Kobe's not in synergy though. He should walk up here. Not on the same page. Mithy's going to interrupt Kobe. And Sven takes a lot of damage. I mean, if this was a Chinese bot lane, we could see an aggressive flash on the W from Mithy, and Sven would have to trade flash and they'd be dead. So. This is the difference between what we call a good LCS bot lane and actually abusing the fact that that Zen gets caught there. Yeah. Kobe and Nisbeth, yeah, just not quite on the same page. They're happy with that trade. So in their minds, they won the trade, but they could have absolutely destroyed that lane. Yeah, the potential for additional gain was significantly larger than what Gotta we saw Gotta work for gains. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Splice. Especially you. Trevor. Gonna get there. <laughs> Gonna get their standard lane set up. Wonder where up top currently farming relatively well into Soaz. Double TPs on the side of Splice. I want to see how they make use of uh, those summoner spells. And Mithy gonna line up onto Kobe. Piercing light connects as That's does the headbutt net. pulverize. That was a 90 caliber net there, I believe. Cancelled instantly. Yep, it's on cooldown right now. So the new Alistair combo, so forgiving. 
Uh, it got obviously got patched at 6.3. If you press W and Q slow enough and you don't actually panic Q in place, you will land every combo. And more importantly, it's a lot harder to dash out of it right now. And it makes it also just a strong lane pick because you can actually start canceling these gap closers. So Mithy's already demonstrated the ability to do that once. We need to watch it again. Press two buttons. <laughs> Press two buttons. Uh, it's all about timing. It was really good. Uh, free change. Before the Alistair combo got slowed down, Mithy was one of the most impressive Alistair combo players that I've seen. He would rarely miss. But after the slowdown, the mechanics just changed inherently and you could, couldn't actually land certain combos. It was impossible. Yeah, we said it so many times on broadcast that I had to actually stop myself doing it. Trashy sneaks up into the tri bush. Amazing. Trashy He's going to be aware of this. There is pings. So as well, oh, this is big. leap forward. Rappel comes up. Amazing misses the sonic wave and Trashy walks away. Yeah, in this exchange, Rappel is so necessary to shift targets, reposition. The fact that Rappel gets used early means Amazing and Soas have the upper hand in the 2v2. Now Spice Jungle has been revealed. Release pressure in the mid lane. Release pressure in the bot lane. Suddenly everybody can play more aggressive and more importantly, Soas can look to win this matchup, but Wunderware has done a fantastic job so far. Actually staying even CS, very I've been, impressive. I've been watching the mini-map and it seems like Wunderware's been farming under his tower for a fairly lengthy period of time. And it's gonna be helping out. Our people gets a very, very good trade into Senkax. He's going all in. The chains have come out. Senkax is in trouble. Sonic Wave will not connect. Oh, amazing. amazing. With the respect. So that, that is not a miss. Basically what he says is like, Senkax, I respect you to be good enough to press E there to dodge my Sonic Wave. And he tries to predict uh, Lissandra E. But Sankox, with a cool level head of place, checks where the Q is going first before deciding. Obviously, we're playing on 8 ping. You have the time to decide that, but... It's, Pro it's, players have the time. Yeah, I can't do it. I just, <laughs> ah, I'm lucky, you know, jungle camping my lane. But uh, no, that's I love those interactions where it's a mind game. Do you go straight for Sankox? Because then he E's. In the end, if Sankox plays smart, he can always dodge that Q. But uh, that's really like what he did. So early backs from both Senkax and Power Viva. Well, maybe that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, Blasting Wand, as well as the Doran's Ring for PoE. Boots, a second Doran's Ring for Senkax. So maybe just a little bit up from first for LeBlanc and that Power of Evil. Let's see what he can do. Wonderware's got a big wave pushing towards him, and so has really putting the hurt in that lane. The wave's actually pushing away from Wonderware, and that's why when Soaz wins that trade, it's very, very cumbersome for him right now, because he's down on poke. He kind of wants to stay to push out that wave, but he's so afraid, so he's going to start finally losing some CS. Sadly, Soas is not level 6 yet, so he actually will have to walk the lane. Probably even teleport. Um, chooses not to use it. Queen with double global, though, with, with a roaming ultimate and a teleport is such a annoying time for you to play against. Sankrix, part 2. Well, I'm going to sidestep the Sonic wave. The chain's missed as well. This is a good sign for Splice and Sankrix when he has been so instrumental in the wins that they've picked up this split already. Yeah, very comfortable on this uh, Lissandra pickup here. And honestly, we we have to admit failure in the prediction part here. Wonder where surprising us, surprising us all with that Gangplank in the top lane. Staying ahead in CS. Obviously, Soas will equalize that right now with the wave crashing to the tower, but... Being even in this matchup or even ahead at any time is something that technically shouldn't happen. And technically, we've seen amazing show in two different lanes multiple times to no victory yet. Trashy did walk into bottom lane. That's something we didn't see on, on our screen, obviously, if you see it on the map. He walked into bottom lane for Gang 2 and revealed himself. So both junglers have had failed attempts. Here's attempt number four in the top lane. This one might work out. Sonic Wave connects. So as flashes in. And the final follow through from Amazing. Some of the heal comes off from Kobe. Amazing. And oh. so as are reading completely different playbooks. Yeah, this takes us back to week one of the LCS where the whole Origin had lacking communication started because they did exactly the same thing. One guy wanted to go into the tower. The other guy was like, no, there's no way this is going to happen. And at least one of them was right. So as right now, trashy. As cocoon. I've seen birds in Australia eat, get eaten by spiders, and that's what Trashy wants to do. I saved it at the end. So as uses, there's an exhaust that comes out as Mithy rocks up. Gets away with his life, but Mithy needs to get the summoner spell down. Power of Evil will use Cleanse to jump out of the tomb. Senkax forced to flash away. Yeah, a nice little exchange right there. Just uh, the E gets you with Power of Evil, predicting the Juke with the upwards with the chain. Instant Cleanse there. Power of Evil taking control of his mid lane matchup. There was respect from Spice. They knew Alistair was missing, so they didn't overchase initially or go for the dive. But Spice are taking control of this game. Look at the gold lead, 2,000 already. The last time we saw Spice do this, they beat Fnatic last week. Origin have to do something if they want to pull this back. And this is very pivotal for Splice. 
Because if they pick up another win here against Origin, they start looking at playoff bursts. They start looking at breaking into the top six. Yeah, Spice, their first goal right now is obviously that seven place. You don't want to be stuck in relegations. Give your players a break. Work on improving, uh, whether it's infrastructure or not. Look at Amazing. If he's level six right here, fantastic gang, by the way. He's 100% dead because you kick into the wall and you can chase, but... So as he's starting to trade, Amazing takes one tower shot, few hits, and at this point, like, look, Amazing's like, okay, we're done. So as he's like, nope. Jamais. Never surrender. And Amazing gets, yeah, creep lock, but it doesn't matter. He's dead right there. So that is, yeah. I don't even know whose fault that is. Um, both, Maybe. I would say. Maybe we'll get a emotionally charged tweet after the game from Soaz or Amazing explaining the call. Because somebody said go and somebody said no. It's poetic. But it's not the, the, the hardest said thing go, to say. Then somebody said no. And then they both said, oh no. Oh no. All right. Oh gee. Yeah, looking to even up our power review right now with blue buff. You kind of want to go in and just compare the cooldowns. I feel like Chain will be on a lower cooldown with Sandra E. So Chain has a base cooldown of 12 seconds. The Sandra E has a base cooldown of 18 seconds on rank two right now. So that's that's kind of the play you want to make for PoE. Trade your W E combo for Sankrix's gap closer, and then in that five, six second window, see if you can strike. That's how you break open some of these very, very gap close or heavy matchups. One of them will always have a longer cooldown. Uh -huh. See if uh, Power of Evil can do that here in the mid lane. And optimization, Power of Evil may be slightly ahead of getting that first uh, pickup. Abyssal Scepter getting much closer. We see Sven and Mithy completely shoving Kobe and Nisbet out of lane. Plus 20 CS and the tower. And you can maybe attribute that to the fact that Kobe and Nisbet went to help out Wonderware up top. Sunkex is in trouble, got the support of Trash here, self cast in the tomb. Everything connects and Amazing gets one back. And this is Splice not playing with the necessary amount of respect. You can't overextend in the mid lane uh, while playing solo on some other lanes. And Origin with a beautiful read here. They gather in the mid lane, force the uh, overconfidence out of Senkux and find a pick. And suddenly with a tower, the pick off, the game is pretty much even again. We're gonna see if we, they can stop the snowball on the top lane. Just wonder where it's farming up a storm. 30 CS up at 10 minutes. Thanks in part to, actually thanks completely to that failed gank. First blood, getting close to that Trinity Force as well. But yeah, looking at what Origin likes to do, they like to get Zven ahead. They're a very uh, Zven-centric team. He's also one of the best carries in the game, so that helps. Yep. Um, so by no means is Origin out of it, because the entire season they've been playing like this. So us on a small deficit, he's usually died like twice by now. <laughs> and Zven hard carrying with a farm advantage, so Origin are actually right now pretty comfortable with the way this game is going, I think. I need to see them bounce back. Uh, both of these teams traditionally have been down in gold, uh, as far as the averages are concerned, across their past 12 games. And Origin bounced back just as 10 minutes crested over. The tower, the kill. We're down 2k. Now it's a paltry 500 gold. Trashy will be the next target. So I was looking to go forward. Power of Evil can chase. Got distortion, but there's support from the duo. Nisbet and Wonder where, in fact, moving up. But look, while all the attention's down bottom, Sven is pushing up top, so towers are under pressure. Chains connect, Senkax will get rooted. Amazing will not miss the Sonic Wave. Senkax no longer able to use the tomb, and an easy peasy kill with a tower trade in the not too distant future. Yeah, but you have four people of Splice taking down a tower, and Sven's like, you, it takes you four of you to do that? I can do that on my own, which obviously leaves a member's advantage from Origin somewhere else on the map, and so has. Actually created an opening with the Quinn. He's very unpredictable in his map movements because he is so damn quick. He shows up, draws some members from uh, Spice to reveal themselves. Or do the math, he's like, Senkux is alone in the mid lane. We have gap closer double chain. Senkux dies. And this is something that Origin did last week when they were using uh, Soaz's Fiora. We'll expand on that in a second. Glacial Fisher comes out just for Amazing. Amazing's dead. got no flash and he gets deaded. Dead man walking. Yeah, and that was all from maybe an over eager invade. Tower falls up top, so even trades, uh, as far as objectives, are concerned. And with that kill, splice even up the death of Senkax from a few minutes ago. Yeah, this game going back and forth here. Both teams finding openings, even though they don't really get too flustered by their mistakes. That's good to see. Sometimes you see a team get picked off and like, ah, guy's back to the drawing board. You know, keep playing. Keep, keep looking for the opening. Decisive ultimate there from Nispef. Chip's amazing. He goes down. Suddenly the map kind of slows down again. And Spice, remember, they're, they're not aiming for this point in the game. They're aiming for like a 25, 28 minute team fight where GP is like uh, ramped up the right amount and Lissandro is still relevant in terms of damage. Kobe will have one or two items. And that's the team fight that Spice is looking for. 
ticking time bomb then. To some extent for Origin. Origin likely will have some tools to split push. As Soas continues to scale up, but he's now down 24 CS. Ghostplay just completed, so that's a very big power spike. And Origin starting off one of the earlier dragons today. Across the two previous games, we've seen slightly slower uh, focus on that objective. And yeah, with the split push you just mentioned, the second dragon may actually prove valuable. Just burn a little bit away on those towers. Because if you look at Soas and the rest of Origin, not that much crowd control effects. We talked a little yeah. bit about it earlier. And Splice, they're finding a... They like each other. <laughs> Comfort in numbers. <laughs> Four man group again. Guess where's Venice? Alone on the other side. It's it's smart, right? If there's one guy hard carrying, well, he's never play against him. Play yeah. against his teammates. Tower goes down. All right, tower drops. Sven has just made contact with the bottom inner turret. Tempo's in favor of Splice, and with the cannon barrage, the tower stays up. So Splice, one, yeah. two steps ahead of Origin. Splice, they take the tower, and then they tell Origin, no one man should take all these towers. And Sven has to back off. That's exactly what Sven does. It's not so a split pushing, which is what I was expecting. The AD carry Lucian. Why not? 143 CS. So all the CS that Soez is missing versus Wonderway, uh, Sven is picking up, and that's because he's just been alone in a side lane. But at what point do Origin start running out of options with double teleports, with, you know, wave control from GP, from Asandra? Oh yeah, we're looking at double teleport too. That's something we haven't really mentioned. Double teleport combined with a global is so hard to break up in the game if you're a split pushing team. So Origin will need to use unpredictability in their favor. LeBlanc's on the side lane. Caitlyn should never be here anymore because it's so hard for a level 9 AD carry to deal with a level 11 LeBlanc. <laughs> Krug was really, uh, really angry at Copy there. No. It's just not something you see on an LCS broadcast all that often. The blue buff from the previous game was also I, uh, I'm contractually uh, forbidden to talk oh, about Oh yeah, my bad, my bad. I almost set you up for failure. That's my bad, my bad. I won't, I won't go there again. Trash is gonna... Clear out the very end. Once we go post 25 minutes, I'm actually allowed to start talking okay. about Crux again. Before that, sorry, Trevor. Um. Yep. I, I do remember. I do remember. I just forgot that for a second. And uh, Soaz left alone up in the top lane. So, Power of Evil still trying to play a little bit of a pressure game, and we see the duo from Origin setting up middle. Yep. Some wave clear has been assigned to clear that out. Splice is locked in right now. They're, they're, they're pinned down on the wrestling map uh, because. Their sidelines are getting pushed in. They are a good group team fight, but if you can't commit to that, it's going to be very hard. They do have double teleport on each side lane, so now it's up to Nisbeth and Trashy to work together, move in, get that deep vision, and set up these teleport flank wards. And that's what Origin need to be wary of, and they have fallen prey to some fantastic flanks this season already, so have they learned their lesson? That is the big question. We'll find out as they decide to push. And wonder where Gonna be under some gank pressure. Barrel will spot out Soaz. They could have went for it, but they didn't have the vision. So that's the downside here. Origin, obviously we have complete overview. It's like, ah, why didn't you go for that play? He was alone. Obviously Origin was fighting against complete fog of war. And that's obviously something you need uh, when you're split pushing. That's why Origin has so many yellow trinkets left still. Because they really need the ward everywhere on the map to play the split push game. Twice, a little more concentrated in their efforts. To quote Crepo from off air. Actually, I'm wrong. Spice of the yellow trinkets. Yeah, spice I lied. Of the yellow. They need blue trinkets. Numbers of uh, pink wards across the inventories as well. A lot on the OG side, but they're falling slowly further behind. Do they need pink wards? I'm actually taking it. I actually think I like the yellow wards, unless Baron becomes it on, the, on the table. So right now, I do like the yellow trinkets because it works so well against split push. Took me a while to get there. Sometimes I didn't think out loud. And Origin actually with an abundance of sweeper, which means they. I kind of want to look for picks, but they're finding it hard to find a pick because they can actually see who's coming. So Vision Denial works for them. And the threat of TP from yeah. Gangplank or Lissandra is ever-present. Power of Evil on the side that he may get collapsed on. Instead, Splice trying to get some more Vision in Origin's jungle. It's two minutes until Dragon. Remember, the first one's picked up by Origin. Yep. So Splice trying to get some maybe Vision around a potential objective. Oh yeah, Splice won Origin to go for the Dragon. He's like, hey, do you like this objective? Why don't you... Maybe all five take it. For example, stand in the Dragon Pit, maybe. Why would they do that? Yeah. I mean, Splice surely won't find that sort of opportunity. No. So, as at least try to push that wave out. So, if the bottom lane is pushing against the Splice 
towers. Maybe Origin have some more options. But truthfully, this game is just slowed down. Uh, in order to get a tower, you have to commit so many resources or go very deep in enemy territory. And neither team has made incredibly aggressive posturing. But we see a mirror of support items. Yeah, because this one team wants to split push uh, with double, like, with pressure. The other team kind of wants to split push with double TP and then collapse too. So vision is just so valuable. Um, Spice kind of want to split push in the setup and then go into team fight. Orgy want to keep split pushing. So going for four wards instead of just the traditional three um, definitely helps here in the support. It is a vision game. Very, very often in this in this current meta game, it just boils down to mid game being decided by vision, which team can consistently do it better. It's not like one moment. It is a consistent build up. Deep ward the enemy jungle, then build on that to get the information. Keep basing with your supports. Uh, supports have never been happier that Homeguards is now free. <laughs> Copy eats a whole lot of the culling from Sven. Still down 40 CS. Sven working his way towards his first Zeal item. Uh, Zeal plus Eye Edge for Kabi. Abyssal Morella Nomicom from Power of Evil. And this bit will just take a whole lot of bull. Ooh, Sven with the poke here though. Soas coming in. Obviously, Turbo Jet Soas. Is this the tower? There's a lot of damage coming up from both Soas and Sven, but the threat of Engage. And you can also see side lanes being controlled by Wonderware and Senkux. Yeah, and uh, Origin's obviously wary of their uh, side lanes for teleports, but yeah. Wonderware is doubting, like, do I really ulti for three creeps? But three creeps is all it takes to just whittle down that turret. Origin looking for the collapse here. Wonderware getting caught. Oh, the barrel goes down as well. Soaz, uh, maybe with the counterplay, the support from Mithy's not coming in. Soaz will get the kill. That got very, very risky. Yeah, Origin, Soaz here, puts his opponent in his underwear. One more W there, takes him down. And Power of Evil is able to defend the mid outer turret. But that's just a relief of pressure. Origin are still down in gold. Uh, they should be able to close that a little bit as it, not a lot of support to defend this last, uh, this outer turret here. So I picked up a, a fire cannon there, immediately sold it. It's like, nah, I'm actually going Phantom Dancer because again, this plays into their style. Origin will never want to team fight, so you want to build your itemization around the 1v1 exchanges in the side lanes, because that's what Soaz wants to do. Use his mobility to find a pick alone, hopefully supported by the Vision then, to make sure he wins that. And that's why he goes for the yeah, the best dueling item uh, you can build out of that zeal is the Phantom Dancer. So itemization secured. Dragon number two picked up. Damage over time onto those tower autos. Secured. So whether Sven or Soaz is left alone in lane, it can help knock that over ever so slightly quicker. But they still need to break through this this ring of vision. It feels like every time I look at the minimap, Splice have some vision inside Origin's jungle at the moment. It's just being cleared out by Mithy. But the problem is, or I, maybe it's, it's a strong word, but I don't feel like Splice is making use of that vision. It's hard though. They're continuously being pushed in. They're they're looking for an opening. Origin isn't pushing to the to the point where Splice can actually collapse either though. Like when do Splice really want to pincer? It's when Origin kind of cross the midway point in the mid lane because you don't want to TP to a side lane. You want to TP on both sides of the mid lane and Origin um, will eventually get that mid lane tower and that's when the TP finds start being available. Perhaps right here, there is a ward on the right side of mid. Mithy peeling off, hopefully to keep Wonderware down. It's a delicate balance where you need to be respectful of TP but still put pressure, trying to keep them down. Boaz has that TP available. Culling comes out. Power of Evil is trying to force Cobby away. They get good damage down, but may not be enough. Side lane push, though. Lissandra pushed out the bottom wave, so that's pressure. There's no 1 3 1 here from Origin. So has the base. So right now they're thrown to a flank. That's why they're backing off in the middle lane. And it feels like there's decent deep wards from Origin and Splice's jungle this time around. Give them more information to work with. Soas is dealing with that push, and he has teleport available, Krepa. This bit and Trashy, I don't know if they can defend this tower. The Unbreakable Shield will be enough to thwart it for now. And Origin, maybe paying, playing with the relevant amount of respect. They're yeah. not overstaying their bounds. Every time Wunderware steps in Fog of War, every time Sankak disappears the map, you immediately, you immediately see the, the hesitation on the side of Origin. Necessary, because one misstep and suddenly Splice takes complete control of this game, because Origin's style requires some setup. Like, those lanes aren't magically pushed. It's a multi-step process where you push them, then Mithy walks in for the division, then you push mid again, then you find an opening. 
They've been chipping at this tower, and now they're chipping at this bet. Let's have a look. Unbreakable. Great cocoon from Trashy. That'll stop Snow as it is tracks. The culling goes through the Spiderlings and Cobby's HP. Minions are dying shortly, and Senkax looked like he was burst out as well. Finally, Origin get the tower. All right, Senkax will base get home guards. We see Wunluwe hiding in a burst too. We may finally see the play that Spice is looking for. If not, Origin will equalize the gold lead. There's just no wards. There's all blue wards. There's one trinket ward here. Oh, amazing. That's the TP ward, but Origin completely back off. They respect the possibility of a TP flying and they're happy with what they got. And if Splice are waiting for an overstep from Origin before they pull the trigger, and Origin don't ever overstep, that is a problem. Splice need to maybe force an error, force a mistake. Yeah, they, they will be able to later on force that by just simply walking to Baron and, and starting it. Um, that is kind of what teams do. It's a little early right now because the tanks aren't tanky enough to soak up enough damage and still be able to fight. But like 30 minutes into the game, 35 minutes into the game, maybe that's the play you're looking for. Because by now, Origin is still pretty far away from Splice's base. As they funnel in more, they, they, they yeah, kind of put their hand deeper in the cookie jar <laughs> to get, you know, the good double chocolate chip that's all the way at <laughs> the bottom. Let me see, that's when they can I get that I don't know what up. that cookie tastes like anymore, Crepo. I've been so well behaved. Sven takes an ace in the hole, and the rest of Origin Gonna try apply pressure elsewhere. Power of Evil's up top, Zoas is down bottom, but there's enough. Ooh, this is big. The wave disappears in mid lane, so that's pressure gone. Zoas is done alone in the bottom lane. There is no flank opportunity on Power of Evil because he's playing with the necessary amount of vision and respect. And Origin open up another tower. So it's taken 10 plus minutes, but the playstyle is now beginning to yield benefits. Origin have been aggressively pushing forward, just ever so slightly, inch yep. by inch by inch. And they got out a middle turret, in a bottom turret, a kill, and now they're somewhat in control of the game. Yeah, and they're and they're just playing it split push to a T. There's very little you can say that Origin is doing wrong here. The only thing you can criticize with this playstyle is perhaps speed of execution. But even that, I think Origin is getting really good results right here within the time frame. Now there is a risk, right? Uh, Essence Reaver, Triforce, another some teleports. for Wonderway. Forced error. Let's see if it'll be on Origin or Splice. Cannon Barrage comes down in the retreat. Senkas flashes forward. Amazing is the target. A very good multi-man knockup from Mythic. They've traded one for one. Mid for jungle. Soaz is playing around on the flanks and Power of Evil's looking for a target. Defensive flash away from Soaz and Power of Evil forces Cobby away but doesn't get the kill. Everybody's knocked into the river for a brief swim but it's Wonderware that's with the fishes and it's a one for two. Yeah, in an attempt to force an error here. Splice make a completely unforced error. What a horrible engage. We have to call it what it is. Cannon Barrage completely misses in that fight, and Senkux could not find the target he should be looking for. He went to the amazing, amazing, just played pinball with them. Four man kick, I believe, and then Zven completely untouched. So, target prioritization was absolutely horrendous here from Splice. And Origin, they danced around beautifully in that fight. They really understood how to play it, and that's why they get two kills for one. And more importantly, both teleports are on cooldown right now. Yeah, very, very big benefit. Origin are going to try make it a hat trick. Two kills, and the third one, potentially the Baron. It's going down very quick. There's a lot of damage. Slice are making their way in. Cannon Barrage not available, nor is the teleport. And Origin, maybe wisely backing away. Not worth the risk. Yeah, definitely a little bit too soon here. The war for the Scholar Crab finishes as Origin pick it up. So that means there's no counter Baron on the table here for Spice. Spice after one to go. Good TP, double flank, look at Wonderware. This ulti, absolutely wrong. Senkux, why don't you flash onto Sven? You actually flash on Alistar and Lee Sin in the jungle. Look at Sven, the only thing damage he eats here is a barrel from Wonderware. He could have eaten that damage and gotten a CC there, because he doesn't have, he actually does have QSS, but just the sheer amount of damage from Senkux is enough. If a QSS is gonna stop you from actually damaging the enemy opponent, then Sven gets the most money out of the item he could potentially ever yeah. do. Because you don't want to kill the jungler in the support if you're Lissandra, so... I mean, props to OG, they played it fight perfectly within its context, but we have to criticize Spice for the targeting. Yeah, and Sven, of course, plus 70 CS, 290 at 27 minutes. He's way ahead of Kobe at this stage in the game. Wonder where's a higher, though. As always. <laughs> yeah. The guy's like the king of the side lane farm. When we were running the stats, our stats guy has these really nice colors, like green is a really nice outlier, so we don't actually need to look at the numbers. And Wunderware yeah, pulled ahead there, but he can't translate it into damage. Nope. And Soaz can, even when behind, Soaz was dealing really good damage for being low on gold, and in that fight, Senkux 
Damage dealt him. That can't be right. Zero damage can't be right. He must have done something. I thought he got an ultimate on Amazing. We'll have to double yeah. check that with uh, our stats. Maybe bit. it's a metaphor. Maybe it's zero is no zero. <laughs> right? You're at the European LCS. Numbers don't actually mean anything. <laughs> zero is not zero. Ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by the European LCS. It's like zero is not a size, zero is not a damage. <laughs> zero does not mean nothing. Apparently. So, <laughs> Origin, they are the ones that now have a 2,000 gold lead. And that slow but steady pressure on the side lane, uh, forcing Splice to look for a forced team fight, that truthfully backfire. Now, Sven comes off worse for wear. Off the Kabi, sends an ace in the hole. And Origin. we're back to this mid lane tower pressure. OG running out of towers to take, though. So they're looking at the inips right now, which is really hard because you open yourself for a collapse. PoE, some good poke here. I think you could have stayed even longer there. I think you could have connect that chain on this path, but Origin's playing with the necessary amount of respect because Wunderware is hiding in Fog of War. They're just so respectful of their opponent while yeah. slowly pushing the advantage because Soas will win that 1v1 eventually. So TP, about a third of the cooldown still remaining for Soas. Senkax will have his very, very shortly. And Cannon Barrage is up as well. So Splice, maybe have another double TP gank um, in the tank. Interesting though, Soaz, we talked about how he was itemizing purely for the 1v1. It seems that he wants to flank here. Hang on. Wow, he's going all the way in. They've caught Kobe. Kobe is just obliterated. Amazing with a confident play. Now they turn their attention to Baron. Senkax follows the claw through, finds nobody to root, and puts a barrel in the behind of Mithy. Yeah, and the cannon barrage being down is so crucial because it cuts out usually the escape path for Origin, allowing Senkux to close the gap. He's touching back on Origin, so as though he went for the Hex Winker, even though he's most likely gonna be 1v1 in Wimbledon, so it does indicate that Origin starting to feel comfortable to go for fights here. Yes, they are. Power of Evil dashes forward to the double distortion. Glacial Fish and Fry splits it up, but the damage is already done. Mithy is waiting in the wings to catch Senkax, and it's Soaz that goes on a killing spree. Origin, turn their attention to Baron. Some early mistakes from Origin, but right now in the mid game, ever since 15 minutes, they have been completely dismantling Spice overall. Spice had one chance, one shot. I'm not gonna say the other word. <laughs> oh! That's a three shots. Gangplank uh, goes down. That counts so as a one shot. Come on. I mean, yeah, okay, I'll give it. One well, shot. look, Power of Evil on LeBlanc. This is the first time that he's played this champion this split. We've been wondering if he was going to pull it out, and have he's we? making it count. I have. I actually said it in Pixel Bands last week. Maybe not as convincingly as I could have. I mean, but it is a good performance. I mean, Origin just completely controlling this game. It is, however, something we expected. The rift between top six and bottom four was big. Um, Origin were struggling though, and they gave us plenty of reasons to doubt. But they kind of fall back into this familiar style that we saw actually from some of these members when they were on Fnatic earlier in the season. I say some, only uh, Soaz when he was in like Fnatic season three, he was like the king of split push. He really understood that uh, in his gameplay, and he's bringing it back to the table right here. Let's see how their Baron power play works out. They keep moving it. Yeah. It's on the right of the screen right now. I was like, it's new. You have to play with the new toy, Crepo. But yeah, 2 minutes 20 left on Baron. Obviously secured by red side. Nobody running Runic Affinity. That's why it's plus zero, zero. And, you know, league-wide averages for these power plays is around 3,500 gold. And we need to see what Origin can do with the next two minutes. Siege on both bottom lane and top with teleport available. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about how TP. Hang on. Double TP, in later. fact. Origin are going to get caught up. Power of Evil cleanses and dashes over the wall. They've shut him down. Baron Power Play is going to be counteracted. A strong defense from Splice on the fight. But Soaz is looking at the inhibitor turret. He's cracked one already. Turned his attention to the inhibitor. If Origin can keep Splice busy, how much base damage can be done? Soaz is forced to back away, and the inhibitor stands. Yeah, really good split push here. Again, Origin taking one member down in exchange for an exposed inhibitor. That's worth it in the end. Another tower falls here. Amazing going for a kick. This is it. He has to be dead. Yeah, the unbreakable shield will not keep him alive for too long. I, in fact, retract that. The exhaust kept him up longer, but they lose the tower in the trade. Uh, this is where we start questioning. Is it like buying time for Soas? Yes, it's good, but they could have done that without going for that fight. Soas raises his life for his support. Miscalculates a little bit. I mean, I thought it looked pretty. I thought he knew what he was doing. This buff survives, costs that exhaust though, which is big in these fights. 
But to touch on the timing of these fights, we talked about 25 minutes, 28 minutes is team fights for Spice. The problem right now is that 33 minutes in the game, nearly every carry is finishing QSS or upgrading it already, which makes it so hard for Senkux to have an impact. You want to Ice Tomb for uh, Power of Evil? Cleanse. You want to go for Mithy? Obviously, Alistar. You want to go for Sven? QSS. Soaz has one too. So the problem is, Sandra is forced to kind of ult herself, and that means Origin can disengage and kite. I'm gonna have to do that again and again. But they've got two exposed inhibitors to make their life easier. Less than 30 seconds on this Baron power play. Oh. So has. There's a flyby to say hello to Splice. This might be the first dragon for Splice. They can secure this one. That'll be a very valuable dragon at this stage. And for Origin, just slightly behind their average Baron power play. They do usually sit at about 3,600. Top is starting too. Going for a BT third is just not a really damage efficient build. So, Origin's pressure and, and pickoffs have made it so that Spice is itemizing a little bit more defensively. It's all up to Windowware though. If they can stall, if they can keep their base alive, Gangplank can 1v5 this later on. You, you cannot understate or underestimate the sheer amount of damage Windowware can produce, and he is sitting on a ton of farm. Well, if Origin showed me something last week, is Soa sitting on that ward? <laughs> Soez doesn't want to be with the team. He's quite happy to look for the base. <laughs> you might wonder where he's gone. Power of Evil sent him back to base. Yeah, I got nothing. Yep, right. It ever just secure it. Sven takes it down. Soez, with the help of the minion wave, will shut down another inhibitor. Origin are now just running away. Look at Wonderway on your screen. Really did not expect Power of Evil out the flank. Yeah, that's where you just blame your team. Call this, please. Now, nah, Origin just really good at rotating between these lanes, looking for a mistake. They're forcing mistakes without really overexposing themselves to one. Um, one can argue that Spice needs to set up for the, the TP flanks better, though. We'll talk about it later. Three man combo. Three man knock up into a double pinball strike. The Glacial Fisher comes out. There's a lot of AoE damage. Kobe is down, and Origin forced to think twice about re engaging. Still dancing around the turret to Senkux and Trashy are staying alive. Between Rappel and the tomb, they've dodged a lot of damage. Amazing is rooted in place, and finally Senkux goes down. It's a triple kill for Soaz. He's not done yet. Looking for the Quadra. It's stolen by Scumbag Miffy, and they turn the attention to the inhibitor turret inhibitor will fall shortly after if they stick around instead the potential 1v3 you say stall and i say teamwork with he goes in for another one so as looking to rotate to the bottom lane if Mithy can distract enough so as can put some pressure here uh, you have much life steal no not really so it's gonna take a while but yeah when the gets caught up there trying to defend Donating some extra CS to help Soaz catch up. 6-0-6. Six, six. Playing the side lanes and the flanking perfectly. Here's oh, Soaz going though. in. One more combo here. Like the, the three-man combo, flash kick, because if he doesn't do that, he's too slow with the combo. Kobe barely escapes the piercing light, though. That exposes them to a massive AoE from Senkux. Look at his flash right now here. Boop, flashes out again. Dodges a W for Power Evil. Amazing's going to dash into a trap. Does he get the mind game by the Q backwards? Actually goes for Senkux, but... Yeah, this fight, it just shows you the danger, though, of overcommitting into this Lissandra. If you all commit, the AoE da damage from the ulti that spreads is, is massive, but Origin had just a, such a great start to that fight, and obviously 4v5. Worked in favor of Origin, so only one inhibitor left standing. But Origin, I think controlled is the best word for them this game. You know, some individual misplays, maybe some communication errors very, very early on. Yeah, definitely. But as that soon as that happens, they then just like peace down. We're right. No more, no more risks. No more mistakes. And they've been playing very safe and, and controlled and patient. Yeah, they're like, let's not fight the enemies. Let's just fight the structures. Oh, they get paid on an H two K's book. Yeah, and it worked. And just a stylistic mismatch. When team fight, TP flank, meet split push. It's just a very interesting um, gameplay because both teams know each other's counters. Spice knows that they have to teleport flank. Origin is aware that that's their weakness and it's all about like origin here avoiding the kryptonite yeah and of course the two times that splice have done they lost the first fight and you the second fight the kryptonite. yeah the second fight so has destroyed the base you know yeah. he, he flew in from the blind side of metropolis and took down the structures so so is again playing looking on the side lanes look, he look just how quick it is. he doesn't need to this is just like <laughs> that 
Really? I don't really what, know what the, what, you know bird, what, what bird goes <laughs> broom. Really, I don't know what birds you guys have in South Africa, but over here, <laughs> Central Europe. Uh, you know the worst part is I had that realization myself, and I kind of like half committed, but decided to bail away. I know you don't play fantasy crap, but this is the first week that Soaz has got me points. I picked him up early, and he's just disappointed me in fantasy for six weeks in a row. There's a few guys in the crowd nodding their heads. They like, yeah, felt the feel. pain. They felt the pain. This is why I don't play fantasy. This I can't handle the disappointment. It it killed me. Last week, the Fischio beat me, and he just bragged for a week. Right, back on target. Amazing. Mithy spin. They're in the Baron Pit. Soaz is doing red one. Run amok inside Splice's jungle. Last week. So has won a game by split pushing. Now he's coming for the flank. A defensive Fisher from this, but it's just going to slow people down. So as remember has the Mercurial Scimitar, and Senkax decides not to pull the trigger. Can I just say that I love the picture in picture, the turbo cam we have, following So as around, <laughs> going for the flank. He actually doesn't commit there, and that's something that we saw in like week three or four, where So as would flank, commit, realize he's alone, and die. Definitely improved his ways here, and just takes the scenic route around Summer's Rift back to the bottom lane. Look at Wundu, where he's just on wave clear duty, hoping to use his global to slow down the fight and then teleport in. Origin, they're looking at inhibit response, so you can yeah. see when the inhibitor responds on the circle that's around the inhib. Once that's full circle, it will respawn. So we're over halfway right now, so Origin will need to find an opening, and that opening might be Baron. Definitely want to force ahead. Teleports up, no counter barrage from one to so about a third of the cooldown still to go. Splicer grouping up. Soaz is putting pressure on Wonderware in the base, while Sven and Mithy are on the Baron. Defensive flash from Wonderware. Soaz has won that. The peel away from Origin. They've got Nisbet already. There was no Fisher to be used. The Culling Tank sub damage and amazing lands flat on a trap. Copy's going to continue to try a piece away. Senkax follows the Claw of Doom, but isn't sentencing anyone to it. So has already got one inhibitor. Yeah, amazing. Fantastic League Legends player. Needs to work on that mind sweeping a little bit more. But Origin collapsed immediately. Power Evil looking in the flanks, and they just, they force Splice to face check, and then they pick them off. And Splice trying to outplay in these very, very uh, cumbersome situations. And Soaz just adding so much pressure. Every time it disappears, you got to look at your Nexus. Teleport is available, as is Cannon Barrage for Wonderware. Trashy's at half hit point. Sven with a very respectful flash. Gets out of range of that glacial path. And Cobby's going to continue backing away. Look at Soaz, Soaz coming flanking. from the jungle. There is some damage to be had. Soaz could look to engage, and I think that he will. He falls forward, and Cobby's down. Soaz goes godlike for them juicy fantasy points. A double kill as he trunks down Trashy. A flash away from Senkux over the wall, and Soaz instantly turns his attention. But those barrels hurt. Yeah, they definitely hurt, but the baguette eight, zero, and 6 right now. I love that nickname, by the way. Sounds like a failed comic superhero. But he's straight up carrying his game with the split push pressure. He's just making it impossible for Spice to do anything, and they're trying. Teleport, teleport, zoom, broom. teleport, zoom. Oh, we didn't see the broom. <laughs> I bought a baguette pen because of so is it worlds. And this Fiora play inspired some baguette Fiora skins. Origin are going to crack open yet another inhibitor. They've decided they don't need anything more to finish this game because they've killed Sankax. That's a multi-man knockup once again. A double kill as Nisbet follows shortly. They chase Wonderway onto the fountain, take him out through the healing, turn their attention to the Nexus, and Origin take down Splice. Hard fought. Patient victory. You can see the control on their faces. It's not jubilance, but there was maybe win. less mistakes this game than we've seen in previous. Yeah, yes and no. Uh, I mean, obviously, Splice is in the mid game isn't the most uh, proactive team and isn't the best at playing these compositions that re require heavy flanking. We saw it, um, I think they played an anti kogma comp last week too, on the first day, not the game against Fnatic, the other game they played. And they failed to kind of flank and execute. And this is the same thing, they're playing double teleport, where they need to flank and force a fight, and they're just, they're missing the setup part. And obviously, praise to Origin, they yeah. played that beautifully. But going back to the early, early game, just to be another negative Nancy, that tower dive, if you do that against a good team, if you do that against play in playoffs, you straight up can lose the game off that. Yeah. Because the counterpick Quinn did not get a CS advantage on the Gangplank. 
you then dive and lose all your pressure when your jungle support synergy, uh, your jungle top lane synergy kind of fails there. That was huge window of opportunity for Spice to take control of the game with the double, double teleport, but they just weren't quite there yet. No, definitely not. And we see Yamato Cannon on stage chatting away to the players. For Splice, I think things are looking a little more positive. They are pulling out some performances in recent weeks that are starting to challenge the struggling Origin, the struggling Fnatic. Um, that was the eighth unique champion we've seen Wonderway play. Senkax has played nine unique champions. Nisbet has played eight. And I, I just want to go back to that because we're starting to see them play repeat performances, the Lissandra, the Braum, and those are the performances that are starting to stand out. Senkex, despite you know hitting amazing early, later on he didn't waste his ultimate. So, anyways, we're gonna break down the game just a little bit further on the analyst desk to talk about Origins win.